Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new or haven't done yet, please remember to click the subscription button and then next to it the bell so that way you will be notified every time I upload a video. I've had in mind this week to do a few videos but unfortunately I got the I got a cold so I've had to just lay low and cancel everything and so if I in this video if, if the editing is a little bit choppy it's because I had to take a break to cough and or blow my nose and or I'm outside because I just have to take advantage of the awesome weather and there are people walking by having conversations there are noisy vehicles driving by and I've got to share the outdoors with everyone so there might be times the editing is a little bit choppy but it's mostly due to noise and or my schnoz so what can you do and let's just get started I am going to share with you today a passage from the gospel according to John chapter 20 and I will give you the link down below as always uh, if you want to read that along with me or you could also pause the video and read it before I read it on this video. So thank you so much for being with me. John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of their persecutors, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, then they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, then I won't believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. I think this is a really fitting passage for the the Sunday after Easter Sunday, and actually today is also Easter as observed in the Orthodox Church. So our brothers and sisters today are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus on this very day, our second Sunday of the Easter season. I love this passage. I think there's so many good things in it. One of the first things to note is that when Jesus comes to them and says, Peace be with you, he also breathes on them, and that holds a lot of meaning because when the first humans were created, when God breathed onto them and gave them the breath, that is when their spirit or their soul, like the life, came into them. That is when 
the moldings became human. They became people. They, they became alive. And so that breath, what we call life, when we breathe, we know we're alive. When somebody is breathing, we know they're alive. <laughs> that breath, when it is put into us, is is us coming alive. It's our. It's when we're given the opportunity to know one another, to get to know our Maker, to experience what all of creation has to offer us what we can do with each other and for creation all to the glory of God. So another detail that is really fascinating about it is that there are rabbinical teachings that the name of God, which in English we say Yahweh, the name of God cannot be pronounced. It's impossible for us to pronounce it because what the name of God is, is basically that which gives us life. It's our very breath, the sound of our breathing in, yeah, and then out, way. So when someone's breathing, it's like they're declaring for whoever can behold it, whoever will behold it, that they are the created and they are, in fact, bringing praise and worship and glory to the Creator, whether or not they know it. So Jesus, in this passage, breathing on the disciples, is reminiscent and reflective of the life source that Jesus is, that He is the life and the resurrected life, the life transformed, the life freely given, the bread of life, the blood of life, our sins forgiven, our souls, our spirits cleansed and washed over, that we can know our maker, that we can know our creator, that we can know one another, that we can love. That is the breath of God. That is what Jesus does when he meets his disciples. Peace be with you, and not only peace be with you and on you, but I am going to breathe on you, the source of your life. Here I am. I am with you. I am your peace. So that is really significant in this passage, that Jesus breathes on his followers, on his people, on his family, it's kind of like, it might be odd for us to think about going around and when we see people, oh, let me breathe on you. Usually we try not to breathe on people because we're conscious that maybe our breath is not the most sweet smelling. And nobody really wants that. I don't want somebody to come up to me and oh, breathe on me. But that God does this, that God has done this, the breath in our lungs the life in our bodies is the breath of God, the life of God. It's just another indication that Jesus is our God. Jesus is our maker. Jesus, the word of life, the word of God, the author of creation, is with us and among us, wants peace for and with us and through us. And that is life that he breathes in into us and onto us. The second thing that I would point out is that not only does he come and say, peace be with you and breathe on them, but he shows them the markings where the nails would have gone through and pierced through his flesh, and then his side where the spear would have pierced him. Why Jesus does that for those to whom he appears in that locked room it must be significant. There must be reason for that. And I think it's to show them this is really me. This is really the same teacher, the one that you love, the one who has died. I am here and I am with you. I have risen again. 
I have conquered death. I have defeated death. You have been confused. You have been forlorn. You have experienced a kind of darkness and a crushing of your spirit and your hope, unlike anything you ever have in the past and probably never will. And you didn't know what was going on. You didn't know what to make of it. But now you do, because I am here. I am risen. I am your friend. I am your teacher. I am your savior. I am your God. I am your maker. And so they know it's really him. So they relay this story to Thomas, and Thomas wasn't with them. So in my experience, Thomas, kind of like Peter, in this passage gets a bad rap. Why doesn't he believe? And Jesus says, you know, blessed are those who believe that haven't seen. So come on, Thomas, why couldn't you have believed? Just believe the testimony of the others. Well, I would like to ask if Jesus had appeared to the ones that were in a locked room, a secret gathering, that there was really no way in, then if he had only spoken to them, would they have truly believed that he was really there? Might they have thought in our emotionally fraught and fragile state of mind, maybe it was a group, collective imagination, a kind of mirage that we created together and that we believe something that we made up. Maybe it was just our minds and our hopes manifest, and maybe it wasn't really Christ, our friend and our Lord and our Savior Jesus among us. It's impossible, right, that he could have come through the locked doors, through the, through the walls, or up through the, the floor, through the ceiling. How, how did he emerge? From where did he emerge, and how did he get to be among us? He... He wasn't there, we just thought he was there. We wanted to believe it so badly. So Jesus showing them, no, this is really my pierced flesh. I'm really here with you. At least gave them, along with the breath, along with the words he spoke, some tangible things to hold on to. Perhaps it's harder to doubt something that you did touch, that you did smell that you tasted, you know, the, the things that, the more senses have been invoked, it's harder to doubt that that thing really happened, that really did take place. And I'm, I'm sure Thomas would want to have believed it. He wants to believe the good news, that Jesus did come back, that Jesus conquered death, that Jesus is alive again, that Jesus is risen. I'm sure, I'm sure he would want to believe that, but Thomas is just saying, I need a piece of the tangible in order that I would believe with you like you do. And instead of faulting him, when Jesus returns, the first thing he says to Thomas is, hey, put your hands here, see these? Touch me, I'm really here. And then Thomas could believe, he, could, he was able to fully embrace the good news that Christ had conquered death, that Christ was with them, Christ was risen, Christ is risen. You know, these things have been written so that you might believe. So we have two accounts in the same passage. Jesus appearing to a group of disciples. Here I am, touch me, I'm really here. But how many times would Jesus have to come back and do that for each one of us? It's not that Jesus couldn't, but the blessing is that we gain so much when we believe these stories, these accounts. These are testimonies. This has been passed down through the ages. It's our legacy. It's our heritage. But it's only blessing to us if we do believe it, if we do accept it, if we do receive it, and say with Thomas and the others, my Lord and my God, you are risen, you are here, you are real. In fact, you, you are among us today. You do stand with us today. So I guess from this passage, 
we can reflect on again the meaning of life, the wonder of our breath, what it means, what it looks like to embrace and to have peace, to experience peace, to extend peace with one another. And then what the testimony that has been passed to us, that has been preserved through the ages, how it blesses us when we believe it, when we say with Thomas, with the other disciples, I wasn't there, but I believe this. When and where in your life have you been hiding in your dark room when your hope has been dashed? Has Jesus actually shown up and said, Peace be with you. I died so that your sins would be forgiven and so that you would have life. And here I breathe life back onto you, back into you. I'm someone that you're able to cling to, and I want you to do that. I want you to know that I am really with you and I really love you. Maybe you're in that dark place right now. Would you be able to take a moment, quiet yourself, and close your eyes maybe? And just let the pain and the brokenness that you feel and sense all around you and within, and just name it, declare it. And just say, Jesus, you know, where are you? I believe that you're here. Would you give me something to hold on to? Would you give me something tangible? Would you breathe on me your love and your life so that I have love and I have life and I have peace? Will you keep that promise? Will you extend that promise to me? Where are you manifest in my life? And who are the people around me, even the circumstances around me that tell me that you are really here, that you are alive, that you are risen, that you do love me, that you do keep me. I want to hope. Jesus, please breathe on me the breath of life and help me believe that peace is coming. So if you're willing to do that, then let me know what happens. Let me know what you discover, what new insights you gain. Let me know. Always let me know. And then also reflect on how your life has been touched and transformed by this good news. When have you been like Thomas? When you needed something tangible for yourself so that you could believe? And when have you had perhaps even a greater blessing because you believed and you accepted the testimony of others? There's a prayer by St. Teresa of Avila that I would love to share with you. I've been wanting to for a while now. I think it's beautiful and it totally applies to how and why I believe Jesus still walks among us today. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion onto this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body on earth now but yours. So yes, I believe that Jesus is risen. I believe that Jesus reigns. I believe Jesus is alive. But through the belief and the trust, the faith I have in scripture, I also know that Jesus walks among us because we are his people and he is manifest in and among and through us. And that's beautiful.
So in what ways do your doubts hold you back? What can you gain from believing? Maybe it's things that you can't anticipate. You probably can't. But that's part of why it would be a blessing, right? Like, we can't always anticipate how our joy would increase and all the good that can come of something that we open ourselves up to. So that's my challenge for you today. And as always, I pray that this has inspired you. I pray that you are challenged. I pray that this blesses you. I pray that you are encouraged and lifted up. I pray that your hope and your faith, your trust, is increased. And that you abide in love and that you are love. So bless you, holy ones. And I'll see you next time.